Welcome into 24-7 Sports, the YouTube channel. And if you're hearing us on the podcast, I am Blair Angulo, joined by national analyst for 24-7 Sports, Cooper Patagna and Chris Singletary. And we are here to discuss the new refresh, the update to the top 24-7 in the 2024 class as we get geared up for the season, guys. Let's kick off right away with the number one player in the 2024 class. That would be five-star quarterback Dylan Rayola committed to the Ohio State Buckeyes earlier this year, and he leads the charge, Cooper. This is a player who is phenomenal as a passer. He's got really good athleticism, a strong arm. I think mechanically you see everything there that he's capable of. And there was some chatter for a bit that Ohio State was potentially trying to angle to get him as part of the 2023 class. So if Ohio State thinks you're ready to get into a college campus earlier uh, than, than you maybe were scheduled to, I think that speaks volumes. Well, I don't blame him. You know, I was looking at him earlier today, six foot three, 228 pounds earlier this offseason, throwing in Southern California. And, and listen, talking about his dad, a little bit of the genes, Dominic Rayola, if you want to throw it back all the way to the Detroit Lions, was an All American center at Nebraska as well. But Dominic Rayola played 14 years in the league. And when you look at Dylan Rayola, it's kind of almost this body type where you're like, this guy's a quarterback. Uh, but watching him throw the ball, it, the ball comes out differently. I think arm talent-wise, Dylan Rayola is different. So when you talk about Ryan Day maybe having that conversation with a Dylan Rayola, talking about potentially reclassifying to the class of 2023 from a from a talent standpoint, that certainly makes sense. Now Brock Glenn in the boat for the Buckeyes, a, a four-star quarterback out of Tennessee. But Dylan Roy Rayola has everything that you're looking for uh, in terms of the physical tool set with a quarterback. And I'm going to be interested to watch him play this year at Chandler. Yeah, he's supposed to kick off his senior or his junior season the first weekend of September, actually in Southern California as part of the Honor Bowl. So he will be playing an out of state game right off the bat. It's going to be really interesting to see what he looks like in his new surroundings. He's a player that transferred in from the state of Texas. And Chris, you live. Uh, in the state of Arizona, I'm sure you've heard about Dylan Rayola and, and his skill set for uh, for such a long time since he arrived there. Uh, what do you like about him personally? I think I like when you see, even though he's a big body kid, he still has tremendous athleticism. And he understands playing the quarterback position. A lot of times guys get caught with just throwing it with their arm. He understands the using his base, his lower half. And when you see how he's built, you see the, the definition in the hamstrings and the glutes. He also knows how to really generate his power and velocity from his lower half and his base and not always have to utilize just throwing it with his arm. From that manner, it also enables him to really change speeds on the ball, depending on what he's throwing. If it's the deep comeback, the deep dig, the, the out route, you know, really being able to put some loft on the ball. So I really love his touch, even though he's a bigger guy who can always throw the speed ball, having the baseball background. I really like that. And I like the fact now being in Arizona, I think the competition will be even a little bit better than what he played in Texas. And so now he's also going to have better guys playing around him, the competition, like you just said, starting the season off in California. I think he's only going to elevate his game to the competition that he's going to face week to week. Now, before people start to throw some hate mail your way, Chris, he was playing in a lower division in the state of Texas, uh, but this will be a step up for him playing at Chandler, which is a national powerhouse. They go out and play a national schedule. They're they're really competitive. He's got a, a tremendous roster around him. It's going to be really fun to watch him as he continues to develop. Not the only quarterback that we're going to talk about. And remember, if you want to catch the full top 24-7, head on over to 24-7 Sports, a new refresh for the 2022 2024 class. So start familiarizing yourself with the names that your favorite college football program will start to pursue as soon as some of the names begin to come off in this current 2023 recruiting cycle. Other quarterbacks, Cooper, the guys that are up there right now in the rankings, Jaden Davis, Julian Sain, Elijah Brown, DJ Lagway, CJ Carr, who's committed to Notre Dame. What stands out to you about this group specifically? Well, that's a that's a really deep group and a talented group. We, you know, we talk a lot about the quarterbacks and the arms in the class of 2023. I think that that's about seven deep in terms of elite arms. I think this this class is is pretty much in that range as well. Starting with Jaden Davis, a guy out of Providence Day in North Carolina. I got to see this offseason and really liked him. You know, only six foot and a half, but he's stout at about 190 pounds plus, and that ball 
really comes off his hand hot. I think the biggest thing for him is just kind of learning how to change speeds and understanding the nuances of the quarterback position. But in terms of raw physical traits, that's certainly a guy that you like a lot. I think one of the more polished passers in the class is Julian Sand uh, out, out of California and a guy that we've seen his stock rise tremendously, uh, and especially with this latest update. But I like him a lot. I think some of the attractiveness to him is that you know what you're getting. And like I said, I think he's one of the more high floor prospects, but there's some really intriguing guys as DJ Lagway kid, you know, pretty similar to Dylan Rayola in terms of the frame, six foot three, 225 pounds plus. He is raw, but he has one of the most explosive arms in the class. And, you know, take that into consideration, knowing what we just said about Dylan Rayola and, and CJ Carr. I want to hit on him for a second, just being around him this offseason, seeing him at the Elite 11 Regionals in Nashville. He's got a little bit of that it factor, whatever you want to call that. He's got some gravity to him. So, you know, he was at a camp with Nico Iamaliaba, one of the best signal callers in the class of 2023. I thought CJ Carr was the best quarterback there in attendance that day. Uh, but certainly if you're a Notre Dame fan, a lot to be excited about. Yeah, speaking of reclassification, which we mentioned with Dylan Rayola, that was another name that was being tossed around as a potential reclassification to the 2023 class as Notre Dame was trying to get CJ Carr to get to South Bend a little earlier. Doesn't look like that will happen. Um, and they were obviously in on Dante Moore. So for them to go in and get CJ Carr and pull him <clears> from that Michigan legacy, I think was very no notable. And, and he's one of the better quarterbacks here in this class. Chris, you've been at a number of offseason events and you were able to see a couple names that we're going to mention now. Isaac Wilson, who has some familiarity, he's the brother of Zach Wilson, the, the second year NFL draft or the, the second overall draft pick a few years ago and, and going into his mm -hmm. second year with the, with the New York Jets. And Damon Williams, who has been compared by some out west to Bryce Young with his ability to improvise, with his uh, kind of his, his skill set, right, with his ability to move in the pocket, but mm -hmm. also scramble and, and gain yards with his legs. Those are two really intriguing prospects out west. Yep. So I got a chance to see both of those guys actually in the same tournament one weekend. And I really liked from the skill set, but more importantly, how both of those guys played the game from a cerebral standpoint, really understanding what the defenses were trying to do to them, really understanding where they were able to go with the ball immediately in the seven on seven setting, and then really throwing guys open, you know, both of them being kids that are coached by their fathers, you know, with DeMond and his dad and Isaac and his dad, really understanding ball placement and really, really fitting in in terms of really being able to make the correct play. And then ultimately at times when, hey, you know, when you got to throw it in tight windows, both of those guys were really able to do it. DeMond has tremendous mobility, a calmness about him, a presence about himself. Um, you never can almost speed him up, which was real interesting. I'm excited to see him this season and have an opportunity to see him play live. And then with Isaac, you saw the ability to really be, do a good job of ball placement on the deep balls, really on the, um, the, the inside fade routes to the slot receiver, really putting it on the outside shoulder away from the defense. And then also reading his keys and understanding when defenses were playing too high or three high, where to go with the ball. And so for him, it was just a matter of times too, really being patient and not trying to go always for the home run. And then with the mind, he was just picking people apart. You know, the key is with both of these guys, how will they continue to grow and develop from a physical standpoint in terms of just height and overall weight? But they both bring what you want, understanding how to play the game from the shoulders up. And now they also have to continue to play and progress in terms of just having reps. And I think when you see that and you realize how well versed they are now as guys that are going to their junior year. You look at the long term projection. I think wherever these guys choose to go to school are going to be really pleased because they're going to have a ton of reps. They're going to be able to play at a high level. They're going to have seen a lot of different defenses, a lot of different schemes, and they can be able to process it and not get rattled and always make the correct play. Yeah, Isaac Wilson, when you talk about the quarterbacks at Corner Canyon in recent years, Jackson Dart, who is now at Ole Miss via USC, had a tremendous freshman season in Los Angeles and looks like one of those guys that Lane Kiffin is going to continue to ride on. And then Devin Brown followed him at Corner Canyon, and he's now mm -hmm. at Ohio State. So it's going to be interesting to see what Isaac Wilson is able to do. Circle August 19th on your calendar. Uh, Isaac Wilson heads to Vegas to play Bishop Gorman. That's going to be a big test for him. Hey, and that's my about CTV circle. right there now. That's my and then CTV. When you think, and when you think about circling dates, how about October 28th, Dylan Rayola versus Damon Williams in the city of Chandler, the battle uh, for Chandler, Arizona. Uh, and also, Damon Williams goes on the road to California. They will play Los Alamitos and Malachi Nelson. 
So a lot of room there to make statements and to, oh, and yeah. to potentially continue to move up in the quarterback rankings specifically. For all the rankings, remember, go to 247sports.com for an update on the 2024 class. We're going to continue our conversation looking at some of the big risers and some of our favorite positions. And Coop, I'm going to begin with you. Uh, you know, you, you obviously dive into tape uh, quite a bit. You look at a, a lot of different positions. You look at a, a lot of different you know, traits and characteristics. And although these players have only played two years of high school football and they've got two years remaining, uh, you really like what you saw out of Ernest Willor in terms of his makeup and, and his overall upside. Yeah, six, three and a half, 250 pounds. I got to see him a couple of weeks ago with Andrew Ivins down there in Bradenton, Florida. And this guy, you know, I had to look at my roster and I said, who is this? Because he was one of the only rising juniors in attendance, but he belonged. And like I said, he carries his weight exceptionally well, but he is quick twitch, explosive, has a great first step off the line of scrimmage. He bends exceptionally well, but he is very advanced with his skill set, with his hands, understands the nuances of the position and, you know, went up against uh, some of the best offensive linemen in the country in the one-on-ones versus Olas Alina in the Alabama commit also uh, went up against Najee Harris, a Florida commit. So two guys from the SEC and he handled himself exceptionally well. So he was a pleasant surprise there going back, looking at the tape. Uh, you know, I should have known that coming in. I think there should have been some, uh, a little bit more anticipation on my end, but now with him, at IMG, I think this guy, in terms of the resources that he's going to have available to him in terms of coaching, in terms of strength conditioning and, and, and nutrition as well, over the next two seasons, I can see Ernest Willer not only rising uh, in this update, but man, I, I, literally watching him going back and kind of marrying up the, the, the combine tape with what we saw in person with the game tape, I think this is a player that could potentially land in the top 32 when it's all said and done. Yeah, Willer, it sounds like he's only scratching the, the surface of, of what he's going to be able to accomplish and his overall potential. And, and speaking of upside, Chris, Xavier Phil Simey, he's a wide receiver from McKinney, Texas, and he's the big riser that you like in this update. Hey, I love his skill set. You're talking about a guy that's consistently running 10 sits in 100 meters, so you see the athleticism and the speed, and it translates to the field when you watch the film. Also, a kid that's a shade under six feet, has a six um, one wingspan, so you see the length. I really like his body control, his change of direction. You know, as receiver last year, he had almost 400 yards receiving on th uh, 30, I mean, 400 uh, plus yards receiving on 32 catches. But I think his long term projection is going to be interesting because he's a high level power five prospect, whether he plays receiver. But I think some teams also like him in the secondary as a corner. He shows some physicality, ability to have some two way snaps. So when you have a guy like that that can play two ways and has at a high level and a high clip, you know, it's a matter of the schools that are recruiting him. Where does he fit us? But I think when you look at Phil Sam, you see a playmaker with the ball, a guy who can go to the distance. He has some philicality to himself. Where he's running through arm tackles and really able to hit the home run. And then when he plays defense, he doesn't stay blocked. Really good with his feet, good coming to balance, able to stay on top of receivers. And he's also a factor in the run game and doesn't shy away from contact. So I see this guy as a guy that will continue to ascend upward because of his uh, multi-position uh, ability and ultimately again where do you want him do you want him at receiver do you want him at db obviously me uh, being a defensive guy I always want the best players on defense but he's a guy that you can't knock as a playmaker and i think when you look at how he is able to make plays with the ball he also gives uh, value in the special team yeah, a couple risers, a couple players that are ascending, but there's a number of players that are continuing to see their stock rise, and you can check the full list. Remember, 24-7 Sports for the update on the 2024 class. Before we go, guys, position groups that we like in this class. We already mentioned the quarterbacks having not only depth but also quality, and Cooper, you like the defensive backs in this update. I do. You know, it was kind of between the quarterbacks and the defensive backs. And I said, you know what, for the sake of conversation, let's go with the defensive backs. But you talk about five out of the top 10 players in the top 10 at the defensive back position. I want to start with Desmond Ricks out of IMG Academy. He is beautiful. I got to see him and Cormani McLean, the top defensive prospect in the class of 2023, work out together in Bradenton at Future 50, which is a loaded event year in and year out. There really wasn't much separation there from those two. So you loved him. Another guy is K.J. Bolden 
out of Buford in Georgia. We had a lot of conversation. What side of the ball is he going to play? I think he's going to play safety at the next level. He's one of the most complete players uh, in the class of 2024. And then there's Ellis Robinson, uh, originally from Connecticut. He'll be at IMG as well. That is a loaded team, but another long, really physically gifted defensive back, and then Jalen Mabakwe uh, out of the state of Alabama and, and a guy in my backyard here in Birmingham. Loves so much about his game, but three-phase player, super dynamic. And then Mike Matthews as well, uh, who we have listed as an athlete, but I think a guy that could play either way, could be a safety, could be a corner, love his versatility. So you look at that class, it's a very dynamic class uh, and a very top-heavy class as well. Like I said, five out of the top ten in the top 24-7 in 2024, all going to be defensive backs. So a, a lot to be excited about there, and certainly a lot of teams going to be jockeying uh, for some supreme talent at the DB position. Yeah, those are premium positions, quarterback, defensive back. I mean, these are the positions that uh, are are – scarce in a way right like you there's not as many elite players at those spots and obviously quarterbacks and receivers and defensive backs and and the players that are connecting on on the plays for the most part i think are going at, at a quicker rate and so even though we're only talking about 2024 class you can bet that college coaches are paying attention to what these guys are about to do their junior season uh chris you like the wide receiver group in this 2024 update yeah, I had to battle Coop, so, you know, he picked the DB, so I'm going to go get these playmakers on these other side. And I really like the overall group of the receiver group. I had a chance to see the top two guys that uh, that I'm going to talk about today uh, in person. You know, you talk about Jeremiah Smith from Florida. You know, he played on a a loaded team down at uh, OT7 on with, uh, with some top guys in 23. And when I say this guy did not shy away, and he actually stood out just like he was a guy that was ready to go play now, Excellent player. You're talking about 6'3", tremendous physical stature and build. He got uh, he has a tremendous body control. And when you look at his track background, a guy that's a hurdler, being at 6'3", almost 200 pounds, you, you see the athleticism, the body control, really was uh, able to win 50-50 balls every time they came to him. He was strong, uh, getting off press coverage, and a really dominant guy. And where he really surprised guys was his long speed. He was able to really pop the top. And so he was a guy, to be honest, he looked like he could go play right now and be able to be in the 23 class and be one of the top receivers. Then you switch gears and you go to Wingo from St. Louis. A guy that's 6'2 plus, very smooth, very athletic, a sub 10, 6, uh, I mean 10, 700 meter guy. Really loved how he was able to drop his weight and get in and out of his breaks. Always was able to create space with his also his uh his tremendous catch radius to be able to help the receiver, I me mean, help the quarterback with ball placement. Really was able to fight defensive backs all for it, and then also was able to get vertical. And then you look at some other guys, you're talking about Jalen Paler out of North Carolina, uh, a smaller receiver, a slot guy, able to always hit the home run. You're talking about um Zion Rogers out of Texas, another guy that shows great vertical ability to be able to play on the outside or in the slot. So you're talking about this receiver group. It's a group that is really made for whatever you like from your offensive scheme. A lot of guys with size, athleticism, everybody shows the ability to run, but also can you got some guys that be dual guys in terms of playing in the slot. And so when you look at this group overall, you see that they continue to grow, they continue to uh, mature from a physical standpoint. And I think this group is only going to get better long term as they continue to play and also just really learn the nuances because a lot of these guys are also on the back end are playing both ways. So now when they're able to just focus on that receiver position, you really see their skill set really go through the roof. Yeah, we're beginning to see some jostling already. We're going to start to see players try to get up in the rankings and and maybe fight for that number one labeling among their position group. It's going to be a lot of fun to monitor their progress, to continue to evaluate these prospects. Remember, this is just one of the updates. It's going to be a lot more here for this 2024 class as we continue to familiarize you with some of the names you need to know uh, for your favorite college football team as they target some of these prospects. So for Cooper Patagna and Chris Singletary, I am Blair Angulo. Remember, like this video and subscribe to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel.